69 million dollars. That was the sale price of the most expensive NFT sold to date. Hello everyone, Ali here. So if you keep up with internet trends, you may have heard of this thing called NFTs. And in today's video, I really want to talk about the real utility behind NFTs and the potential that they hold for online communities. But in order to do that, I'm going to provide you with some foundation of NFTs in case you happen to be new to the space or you aren't as familiar with them. So to give you an overview for this video, we're going to talk about what are NFTs and why are they valuable? Next, we'll talk about their utility beyond collectible art. Next, we'll move into building communities with NFTs. And lastly, we'll finish off with the potential that they have for creators. So what the heck are NFTs? Well, first of all, it's an acronym that stands for non-fungible token. But even that can be a little bit confusing, so let's break that down. Anything that's truly unique can be an NFT. That could mean the title to your house, a picture, a phone number, or even your identity. But the theoretical and the practical don't always meet as you would expect. The current trend of NFTs is really more about speculation and collectibles. So let's take a look at what's selling right now. This picture of a ghost sold for $3,600. This 50 second video by the artist Grimes sold for $388,000. The beloved neon cat meme sold for 300 Ethereum, which at the time that was about $600,000, but now that ETH would be over a million. And most surprisingly, a digital collage of 5,000 days of work by the artist Beeple sold for $69 million. Crazy. I know many of you are going to audibly gasp at those numbers, especially if you're new to NFTs and this is the first time you're hearing that. And look, I'm right there with you guys. It's kind of madness right now. But even if I think it's a little crazy to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a 12 frame GIF of a cat, I still really believe that NFTs have tremendous potential and especially behind this concept of digitally owning something. And that's the key there, digitally owning something. In comparison to physical collectibles, digital collectibles have some pretty amazing qualities. One, they don't degrade over time, so you don't have to worry about getting them graded or appraised. Next, you can send them to someone across the planet almost instantly and in some cases for free. And lastly, you can prove their authenticity, which I think is the most important part. So you don't run into situations like this one. So in 2011, famed auction house Sotheby's sold a forged painting by Franz Hals for $11.75 million. And despite being confirmed as a forgery by independent authenticators, the seller maintains that the painting is authentic. And the situation isn't unique either. Of the $200 billion, that's a lot, of money that is spent on art each year, it's estimated that $6 billion is tainted by illicit activity. And people argue that this is only getting worse with technology advancing. Like, you gotta think, if people are making deep fakes out of humans, you gotta think that, you know, counterfeiting art is only getting easier. While a lot of these NFTs might lose their value over time, I do think it's likely that more of the art that humanity decides to store its wealth within will ultimately be tokenized as NFTs. And while a lot of these just digital collector pieces might hold their value over time because they're perceived as valuable or rare, I want to point out that the potential of NFTs goes so much farther than just being collector's items. The best example, I think, right now is one that hits close to home, and that's video games. And NFT-based games are not only an incredible example of utility beyond speculation, but they also signify the massive potential to build online communities. Because if there's one thing that I've learned from being a Twitch streamer for over five years now, is that there's immense power behind gaming communities and how they connect people all over the world. Just to give you an example of that power, an NFT-based game, Axie Infinity, was the fifth most popular dApp on Ethereum last month, having burned 7,148 Ether, or approximately $25 million, just in transaction fees alone. Now, Axies are these cute little monsters that are kind of reminiscent of Pokemon, and they battle against each other in this turn-based strategy style of game. So the in-game items like the Axies themselves or the land plots that they fight on, those are NFTs. And now this does mean that in order to start playing, you do have to purchase them, which definitely can be an initial hurdle for some. 
But unlike a lot of games where you put money into it and you can't get it out, you can actually resell the axes on the Axie marketplace. And some axes have gone up to about 300 Ethereum, which is really crazy. In addition to the buying and selling of the Axie NFTs, you can also yield tangible rewards through the Smooth Love Potion or SLP for actual money. And this play to earn model is becoming absolutely massive in places like Indonesia and the Philippines, where people are legitimately supporting their families from this game. Another good example is trading card games. That's the world that I come from. Playing games like Magic the Gathering Hearthstone, we're seeing new games like Skyweaver and Gods Unchained create NFTs as the actual collectible cards that you play with. There are tons of these blockchain-based games that are adopting NFTs and the play-to-earn model, and we're only going to see more and more popping up. More on the subject of video games, skins. Skins are huge in gaming. I buy League of Legends skins and I barely even play League. But seriously, skins would be a perfect use case for NFTs. And when you don't want to use a skin anymore, you can sell it to someone who does. As a game developer, NFTs create a world of possibility to create assets for their game and invent new ways to monetize their content by building these in-game economies. My guess is that the gaming industry will really lead the charge in showing people how NFTs can be utilized far beyond just being collectible art. And with these innovative ways, communities with massive scale are created. Before moving on to specific NFT communities, I want to give you one more example of an NFT utility that I think would be really cool and I honestly think we'll see someday. So I am a huge music fan. I've been going to concerts since the fifth grade. And over those years, you know, I've kept a wristband or a physical concert ticket to, you know, have the memory and prove that I was there. How cool would it be if concert tickets were NFTs where you could forever keep your ticket on the blockchain? And I would imagine that the event organizers would wind up making it a really cool piece of art as the concert ticket, kind of like they did here, right? <laughs> like, as cool as this is, I love having it. Ultimately, it will probably get thrown away because, you know, I'm already a hoarder enough as it is that like keeping stuff like this eventually just kind of piles up. But if I could keep that piece of art as my ticket to forever prove and have the memory that I was at the Odessa concert in 2019, like that, that would be really cool. Or alternatively, you know, perhaps there's a cool art piece that you could only get if you were at the event itself. Um, that would be another interesting idea. And to think of it, actually, that is a pretty good way to build community through NFTs uh, around music. And some of you might be like, who cares? Like, I don't have any place to display these. Like, why does it matter? And to that, I say it's so early. You know, perhaps there will be a digital hub where you get to display your NFTs to your friends in the metaverse. Or perhaps there will be integration with social media sites with NFTs or social media sites specifically dedicated to NFTs. When the first generation iPhone came out, people were enamored by the fact that there was internet on a phone. At that point, could you have predicted Instagram? And not just the invention of Instagram, but people making full careers out of it? Or multi-billion dollar brands using it for advertising? Non-fungible tokens are just one of the new technologies that come about from the blockchain. And as much as I love collecting cool art, it's the concept of the technology that's important here and humanity will collectively invent a million different ways to use it. All right, let's get into the community aspect of NFTs now. While some NFTs are meant to be standalone pieces of art, other NFTs are a part of a set. So you've got your CryptoPunks, your Bored Apes, and even these Pudgy Penguins. And these types of generated art NFTs have been coined PFP NFTs for profile picture because the current trend is to make them your digital avatars on social media sites. Unlike some NFTs, these derive their pricing starting at a price floor, information which can be found on a site like OpenSea. And while the cheapest board ape will probably cost you around $140,000 right now as of September 21, you're not paying that for the picture, right? You're paying for access to the community. So just like people will spend exorbitant membership prices on country clubs, so too will people for the board ape yacht club. Let's take a look at that board ape community for a second. So the Ape team created a website in order to try and bring to life this exclusive club that the Ape owners have access to. 
And that includes making a website with a digital bathroom where you know people can go and write graffiti on the bathroom stalls, as well as offering private online and offline meetups for ADAP owners. And if the price appreciation wasn't enough for the ape owners, going from like a couple hundred dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars, the Board Ape team gave away some free NFTs as well. This past June, each ape owner got a dog companion, and it was call called the, the Board Ape Kennel Club. And now those dogs are trading for about $12,000 each. And what was even cooler is that they set a royalty fee for any secondary sales where all of the proceeds went to charity, specifically to rescue dogs. So on their website, they've got, let's rescue some pooches, apes. And I thought that was cute. Then in August, they gave each ape holder a serum vial so that they could mint a mutant ape. And these mutant apes are now trading for about $16,000. So whether it's the free NFTs or the exclusive meetups, it's making it this a very desirable community to be a part of. That's why we're seeing celebrities as big as Steph Curry literally shell out six figures for a Bored Ape and make it his profile picture. Here you can see him posting selfies in the Bored Ape Discord, which of course you can only have access to if you have an ape yourself. After hearing this, you might feel like you're already priced out of this profile picture movement. and. To that, I say, if you really do want to be a part of it, there are tons of these sets and they go down to the lowest possible prices. And if you do find a community that you want to be a part of, you know, interact, like join the Discord, talk to the community, look and see if they've got a roadmap for future announcements, that kind of stuff. But if you are just looking to flip the NFTs, you know, keep in mind that this stuff fluctuates a lot. There's a ton of speculation. And I will say that the generated art uh, profile picture NFTs, they're getting pretty saturated at this point. So, you know, like with anything, just know the risks and be careful. If you're new and interested in getting into all of this, let me point you to some helpful resources uh, that I use to help understand the market. So the first site I recommend is rarity.tools. On this site, you can browse NFT collections and look to see how rare individual items are um, in comparison to the rest of the set. You can even filter by specific traits and rarities so you have a better idea of how rare the NFT is that you would be buying amongst the rest in the set. And as for the actual marketplaces, OpenSea is the most popular marketplace. It is built on the Ethereum blockchain, so all transactions directly happen on the Ethereum blockchain. And this does mean that it's decentralized, but it also means that each transaction will probably cost you around $100 in gas fees. But I will say, don't worry, there are plenty of other marketplaces that are on the way that will be cheaper to use. And lastly, I want to use myself as an example for creators. So this channel, this YouTube channel is called AlleyCoin for a reason. I do have a social token or a creator coin on the Rally platform. And I just recently took inspiration from the Tom Brady autograph NFT series on DraftKings, where basically if you were lucky enough to snag one of these Tom Brady NFTs, you have future access to purchase his NFTs before anyone else, as well as get special perks like access to uh, a special discord channel where you know the normies can't get into that kind of stuff and what i did is i created a silver gold and mythic tier badge with the same concept so anyone that has a badge will get a uh, future priority to get any of my nfts that come out and i did that because i want to give the core community of the people who have been supporting the alley economy you know a chance to get it before the mass public and another example in the way that I might use it is earlier this year, I did a merchandise giveaway where the 100 coin holders got a couple of items for free. The five coin holders only got one item for free and maybe the one coin holder just got a, a discount code, right? So I've categorized perks uh, depending on how much people, depending on how much alley people held. And I will now do the same thing with these badges as well as, you know, priority access to certain events or tournaments, that kind of stuff. And by the way, for the entire month of September, if you are an alley holder, you can redeem the silver badge for free. So check the discord on how to redeem it. I should mention that my NFTs are on Rally though, and there are some nice things about uh, the Rally NFT marketplace. One, Rally doesn't take any fees, so you're saving a lot of money that you would be spending on Ethereum. One could argue that the UI is a little bit more user-friendly, um, at least beginner-friendly than something like OpenSea. 
Uh, there are some downsides though, you know, keep in mind that the NFTs that are on the Rally platform are only from people that are creators on the platform. So there's lots of us though, like musicians or artists, gamers, DJs, content creators. And if you're really into crypto, another thing is that we cannot currently bridge out our NFTs, but I'm told that that is coming soon. So I'm not too worried about that. One final really good thing about uh, rally NFTs is the energy consumption aspect of it all. You know, a lot of people complain about the minting and buying and selling of NFTs and its impact on the environment. And while I do plan to do a pretty in-depth video on crypto and energy consumption, I will say that on Rally, it does not use the proof of work consensus. So, you know, using NFTs and minting them there doesn't use any more electricity than your average Twitter server. All right, folks. So to wrap up this video, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I really believe that NFTs are this incredible invention from the blockchain and they've got limitless potential. And I hope that if some of you went into this video a little uh, skeptical and not getting it, hopefully I've changed your mind a little bit on why they can be so much more than just collectible art. Truthfully, there are tons more of NFT projects that I could have talked about in this video, but you know, you got to condense it to make it digestible. I will be making more videos on the subject moving forward. And if you would like to see those videos as well as other videos about creator coins and crypto just in general, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, that would mean a lot to me as it is a new channel. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope to see you guys again. Goodbye.